Hello everybody. Welcome to my channel Being Civil. In the previous videos of conjugate beam method, we have learned the theory of conjugate beam method and have done an example to determine the slope and deflection of a simply supported beam subjected to point loading. Those who have not seen the videos, I have given the link in the description below. Just watch the videos and then come back to this example. In this example, we will determine the slope and deflection of a simply supported beam AB of length L which is subjected to a UDL loading of W unit per meter. So we have to determine theta A, theta B which is obviously equal because it is symmetric structure and also have to determine the deflection that is maximum deflection which is at the midpoint the same. Now according to the theory you first have to draw the conjugate beam of this real beam. As you know that a hinge support of a real beam also remains a hinge support in conjugate beam. So the conjugate beam of a simply supported beam will obviously be also a simply supported beam. Now you have to draw the M by EI diagram. As this is a UDL loading so the uh, moment diagram will be parabola. and the maximum value is WL square by 8. It is the moment diagram. You have to draw the M by EI diagram so the value will be WL square by 8 EI. This is a sagging moment so the, the value is positive and the positive M by EI value denotes the load is downward. So we have drawn the conjugate beam and also drawn the loading on the beam. So it is the deflected shape of the beam. You have to determine this angle theta A, this angle theta B, slope and A, slope at A and B, and this deflection it is a maximum at the midpoint delta C. According to the theory, the shear force at any section is the slope of the beam, real beam at that section. So the shear force at A and B will be nothing but the reaction at A and B. So let's find out the reaction at A and B, which is obviously equal. So RA equals to RB equals to this total loading which is the, uh, the area of the parabola divided by 2. Let's write down half into area of the parabola which is 2 third base into height. Base is here L the length of the beam. Height is W L square by 8 EI. So it becomes W L cube by 24 EI. So we have determined the theta A and theta B. Now you have to determine the maximum deflection at the midpoint. According to the theory, the bending moment at any section of the conjugate beam represents the deflection at that section of the real beam. So let's find out the bending moment of this beam at this section. So bending moment at C 
which is equal to the deflection of the real beam. So you see the reaction here is RA. So RA will create a clockwise moment and this loading, this half portion loading will create an anti-clockwise moment. So the bending moment at C will be RA into the distance that is L by 2 Na minus because the, this moment is in the opposite direction so area of this parabola which is half of the total parabola it is the area of the parabola into the CG distance the CG is here so its distance is 3 8 3 by 8 into this length so the distance is 3 by 8 into this total uh, half length that is L by 2 it is the CG distance into 3 by 8 into L by 2 so it becomes equals to RA put the value of RA that is WLQ by 24 EI into L by 2 minus it is also WL cube by 24 EI 3 by 8 into L by 2 taking uh, WL cube 24 EI into L by 2 in common we get 1 minus 3 by 8 so it is W L to the power 4 by 48 EI into 5 by 8 so we got the deflection value is equal to 5 W L to the power 4 by 384 EI it is the deflection value downward at the midpoint this uh, value the 5 w l to the power 4 by 384 ei is the maximum deflection of a simply supported beam subjected to a udl loading at the midpoint you just remember this value So, we have done with the determination of slope and deflection of this beam. Hope um, you have enjoyed this tutorial, an example of the conjugate beam method. If you are not subscribed my channel yet, just hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon just beside it. Thanks for watching, stay tuned, happy learning.